and they say how the God know and is their knowledge in the most high Verily I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency If I say I will speak thus behold I should offend against the generation of thy children until I went into this, the sanctuary of God then understood I their end how are they brought into desolation as in a moment they are utterly consumed with the terrors thus my heart was grieved and I was pricked in my heart reigns Nevertheless, I am continually with thee, for thou hast holden me by my right hand. Whom have I in heaven but thee, and there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee? For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a warring from thee altogether. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may decline my works. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, our loving Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, thank you so much for the thy word that we have read and the messages that we have heard this morning thank you so much Lord, for all the blessing i pray lord that you will continue to uh, give us wisdom as we study your word and help us lord to understand it uh, prepare our hearts and our minds and i pray lord uh, that the holy spirit will speak through each every one of us give me wisdom also lord and your people and uh, they will uh, we, we can see the truth from uh, thy word we, we we are praying lord that uh, all the glory will go back to you uh, because you are worthy uh, of all this praise and glory uh, forgive us from all our sins for all these things i ask and pray in jesus name amen, amen. okay you all may be seated so this uh, psalm is uh, a psalm of asap so the title of the, our study, a message for today is The Trouble of ASAP. So all of us are experiencing troubles in our life. And uh, there are times we are disappointed. We are, uh, we are frustrated on our situation because of, of our uh, point of view in life. So... Today, we're going to look at the two point of view here. In this Psalm 73, we have uh, two points only. The number one, the human's point of view and the heaven's point of view. So, so it depends on the, your point of view, how you will act in your life. Now, this Psalm was uh, written by a man named Asap. He was a mature and godly man who served the worship leader in the temple and was the writer of 12 different psalms in the Bible. And we know if you're going to, to, to study about this man, uh, man Asap, he, uh, he was involved in the, in the, in the sanctuary, in the, in the tabernacle during his time. He was chosen by David and also he served also during the time of Solomon. Yet, in spite of all of this, in spite of his uh, situation in, in the ministry of God, he was ready to hand everything in 
and head back home because he almost walked away from God because his perception of reality was mixed up because of his thinking. This psalm is very personal and filled with honesty. Aesop asked the question that many of us have asked at one time or another in our life. We are asking ourselves sometimes, if God is supposed to bless believers, why do we struggle with health? So most of the time, if we're experiencing difficulty in our health, we ask God why it happens to me. And also in our finances. So most of us, uh, I think all of us are uh, suffering because of this pandemic, because of this situation. And uh, the relationship turmoil, while the unbelievers around us seem to enjoy prosperity. This is his question. And sometimes also we are asking ourselves why other people, especially the unbelievers, are enjoying prosperity. Or we could ask it this way, why are the wicked successful while the righteous suffer? Why they're, like, especially for us, we are uh, teaching, sometimes we are asking why their salary is higher than mine? Especially here, because uh, I think, I don't know, maybe they are looking at their sk the skin. They said, if you're white, your salary is high. If not so white, <laughs> that's why I want to put powder <laughs> to increase the salary. So we are asking many things, especially most of the time we are disappointed because of our situation. Even here during the typhoon, like there are many Baptist churches that was destroyed, their building. But if you will look at the, those people who are corrupt, hindi mo lang naggalaw yung building nila. No? Parang, wow. Naalala nyo sa, sa Kela Tatay. The, inayos, inayos nila yung bubong dahil nasira ng unang bagyo. Pagkatapos ng nasira na naman, dahil may bagyo na naman dumating. Sometimes we are asking why it happens. Why the unbelievers, their, their houses are good, they are strong. And sometimes we ask God about this. So, it happens to Asap. Asap begin, begins with an, uh, here in verse 1, in an introduction, a summary statement, and a, a theological conclusion all wrapped in verse 1. He said, surely, in verse 1, he said uh, 73, truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are a clean heart. Asap is stating the universal premise for the believer that God is good. We know that God is good. Whatever God will do, He is good. He is good in His blessing. He is good in giving things. He is good in uh, controlling everything. And He is good also in His judgment. And also, in Psalm 84, verse 11, it also reinforces this uh, statement. It says in Psalm 84, 11, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will, we, uh, will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Look at this verse. He will not withhold good things for those who walk uprightly. Now, if God is good, shouldn't we receive more good things in our life? Because we are following God, especially Aesop. Shouldn't we at least have more blessing than those who don't even care about God? Sometimes we ask that, why I'm suffering like this? If God is really good, why I cannot receive more good things compared to other people, compared to those who don't believe, who don't even care about God? Now here, uh, let's look at the two point of view here of Asap. Number one, the human's point of view or his perspective. Now, after stating that he knows his is ultimately true, Aesop looks around from a human perspective, wonders what is going on the first half of this psalm. He was bothered by what he had been taught in Scripture because what he had experienced in life was radically different. So in verse 2, he admits that he almost slipped. He almost, he, this verse stands in contrast to the certainty in verse 1. 
it seemingly contrasts because at the first verse he said truly or surely god is good to israel even to such as are a clean heart and then verse two but as for me my feet were almost gone my steps had well nigh asleep asap felt like he was trying to walk on a, a moss covered rocks i don't know if you experienced that when you are in in uh in the sea or lake or in the river you step on a rock la, la, with lots of moss so it's slippery you will all uh, you will easily stumble or fall, uh, will uh, fall down now he came very very close to losing his confidence in god's goodness because because of these four things that we can see here in this uh, psalm in verse three number one uh, number one in verse uh, verse three four i was envious of the foolish when i saw the prosperity of the wicked number one we can see the prosperity of the wicked he saw the prosperity of the wicked the idea is that a proud person is one who blow his own horn real loud those people who are uh, wicked they are more arrogant uh, boastful of what they had and notice that asap is not upset with the arrogant of the wicked but he was jealous of them he wants that they have he wants what they have but actually he goes much deeper in the following verses and then why would the wicked have everything that was only promised to god's covenant people it doesn't seem fair so he he thought what, what what's happening why these people who are wicked who don't even uh, uh, mind God, who don't even care about God, why they are prospering. And he's doing what many of us do when we make judgment based only upon what we see. Based on what we see in our uh, human point of view, his perspective is on the present and he's forgotten the future. He's looking on the present at, the, at that moment. He's not looking to the future that's his point of view the prosperity so the prosperity of the wicked and then number two we can see here also the peace of the wicked it seems that they are peaceful in verse four to five it says here for there are no bands in their death but their strength is firm they are not in trouble as other men neither are they plagued like other men now asap wonders why life seems so good for those who have nothing to do with god he is wondering sometimes we are asking that also to ourselves if we compare ourselves to other people who are pro we we think that they are prospering because we look it in our in human point of view now they had no struggles these uh wicked people their bodies are healthy and strong they are free from burdens common to man they are not plagued by human ills or uh, any diseases they live in the fastling but don't seem to crush and burn their life appears painless and easy you know charles Spurgeon said those who deserve the hottest hell often have the warmest nest so that's what asap saw he think that these wicked people are living peacefully he thought that these people who are not minding god who don't even care about god their life is peaceful and that's what he's stating here in verse 3 and verse 4 and also in in the following verses in verse 6 to 12 we can see here the pride of the wicked as asap looks closer he sees that the unbeliever has no need of god in verse 6 and 12 it says here there therefore pride compassed them about as a chain violence covered them as a garment their eyes stand out with fatness they have more than heart could wish they are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression they speak loftily they set their mouth against the heathen, the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth 
Therefore his, his people returned hither, and waters up a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, How that God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly, who prosper in the world. They increase and in riches. It seems these people who are wicked, they are really arrogant. They are so boastful about what they are, what their situation in life. Now, the, the very people who are often the most prosperous and live the most peaceful lives are also those who are the most arrogant. They don't need any jewelry because their pride glitters like an expensive necklace. They think very highly of themselves and very little of others. They are mocking other people, especially those who are uh, Christian that experiencing problems and difficulty in life. That's why it's really difficult to, to win uh to to god those who are rich that's why the even the bible says it's really hard for uh na yung mga mayayaman dahil they trust their riches and then if you will if you will uh uh share the gospel to them they will look down on you or say oh what are you doing hey, look at yourself and you are talking to me about that that's why my uh, my uh, my relative who is yung medyo nakakaangat ang hirap kausapin sa kanya. Kayo nga naghihirap eh. Idadamay niyo pa ako diyan, di ba? Parang guys, they really don't understand. They think they are living a peaceful life because of their situation. Now, they don't uh, verse 7 says that they have no limits. They have all the time, money and influence to do whatever they want. Now, these prideful people make fun of believers in verse, verse 8 and even speak against God in verse 9 and 11. They are mocking God. Their pride has taken them so high that they look down on God and on God's people. That's why they said, I, we don't need God. And they are mocking God's people. Why are you following God? You don't even know that there is God and how he will look at your situation sometimes we we are we don't know what to do when they said that to us but they because they don't understand and verse 10 indicates that this boasting and scoffing has a powerful impact on those who are trying to follow God that's why it is really uh, 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 those who want to follow God are affected because of these people and verse 12 gives a summary of that the wicked are like. Always carefree, they increase their wealth. They don't even care, and then they keep on increasing their wealth. Many of us secretly look upon those who are famous and financially secured. I watched the NBA draft, and the first 1 to 10, and I saw that they, they have their guaranteed contract, and I saw... 20 million dollars sabi ko bang ang babata pa may mga millionaire na para bang may inggit ka di ba magisip ka but what are these people they are no yung they are enjoying playing basketball and they are earning wag na lang kaya natin sila panoorin para hindi sila pero wala hindi natin maiwasan talaga ng mapanood eh so, so sometimes we are thinking about that. We are jealous of those who seem to live without boundaries, of those who can do whatever they want. Sometimes some of the teenagers are wondering right now if following Christ is really worth it. Sometimes uh, those who are looking uh, behind us are thinking, why it's happening to, to those people who are really... Uh, uh, Yung nag surrender their life to God, really, truly serving the Lord Jesus Christ. But they are, it seems they are not prospering. It seems they are having a hard time living. So, teenage, because uh, especially at this uh, generation, they always think of money, their career, fame, and the, the, to, 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 to be something in the society. 
that's what they are thinking that's why if they if they will look at the, those people especially uh, those who are following the lord jesus christ truly it seems it's not worth following god that's what they think why should you live for jesus when your friends seem to be doing all right without him that's what they're thinking maybe you are ready to to hide in instead of standing for jesus it is more important to you to be popular or to be pure in heart so that is the question especially those who are uh, teenager what is important to you to be famous even to us what is important to us to be wealthy to to gain everything like uh, the bible says what it shall profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul so we can see here the pride of the wicked and then number four in verse 13 Asa basically believes that there is no advantage to holy living that's what he said he 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 saw in this verse he saw the self he, the self pity of the righteous we can see here that his self pity in verse 13 he says here verily i have cleansed my heart in vain is it? i have cleansed my heart it seems that what i'm doing for god is in vain and wash my hands in innocency now from a human perspective there seems to be little reward for righteous living that's what people think if we will obey god if we will follow god truly there is a little reward now it says here also have i been wasting my time why take the trouble to be pure why do i need to follow god to be holy if what uh, what will wait for me is this Pu, uh, yung, uh, walang makain walang mahitiran naghahanap ng mga hanap ng pangangailangan mo that's what the human point of view in, in malachi 3 14 nabanggit din dito yung ganitong complaint in malachi 3 14 to 15 as i say here ye have said it is vain to serve god and what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked mournfully before the lord of hosts and now we call the proud happy yea they that work wickedness are set up yea they that tempt god are even delivered now in verse 14 asap wonders why he's been beat up while the prideful are prospering he turns to self-pity as he described the emotional overflow that has come over him you know self-pity is dangerous mahirap yan kapag nagsiself-pity tayo minsan we were saying to ourselves ako na lang palagi wala na bang ibang gagawa nito ako na lang kawawa naman ako <laughs> I mean, hindi na lang natin binabanggit pero we, it's, it shows to, to our action hindi na tayo madali na mo makina yung nagtatrabaho ka hindi ka nangiti hindi ka nagsasalita di ba? malalaman yan kapag uh, masama ang loob mo pero kapag ikay filled with the Holy Spirit you will sing masaya kang kakanta kata why have you chosen me <laughs> ganun din now in Psalm 73 verse 14 it says here for all the day long I have been played and chastened every morning his affliction lasts all day and when he wakes up the next morning there's a boatload of new problems waiting for him and at the end of verse 14 Asap is filled with turmoil confusion and depression in verse 15 it says here if i say i will speak thus behold i should offend against the generation of my children so Asap is careful here Asap is concerned for spiritual babies like those who are starting in the, in the ministry he doesn't want to do anything to lead them astray so he chooses to keep quiet so if if he had spoken openly about his doubts he would have betrayed younger believers by introducing ideas that there uh, that were not true because they were incomplete that's why he didn't announce what he is thinking he didn't uh, say to the younger children because he said maybe they will be 
uh, confused also or they will be yung hindi na susunod sa Panginoon magbabackslide na you know sometimes uh, if we have any suspicion of being wrong it is better to keep our mouth closed so like in Proverbs 17 28 says here even a fool is thought wise if he keeps silent and discerning if he holds his tongue so this is admirable but it doesn't solve this problem his problem his second approach is uh, same as uh, useless in verse 16 when i thought to know this i was too painful it was too painful for me now keeping things inside only made him want to explode yung para bang sasabog na siya hindi niya because he because that's the problem uh difficulty in te, uh, yung tinatago mo yung problema mo you don't want to share you don't want to ask advice you don't want to to ask somebody about your problem sometimes uh, that's why the bible says we need to talk with with the uh, with those who are those who are spiritual people we need to talk we need to to share our burdens we need to share our problems because god will can use them in order for us to be encouraged for us to 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 go on through to what we are experiencing in our life so uh, he was miserable because he couldn't talk to others and he was overwhelmed because he couldn't figure it out on his own that's the first part of Psalm 73. It's re he's having a hard time to understand why this situation is happening, why it happens to him, and those wicked are prospering. Because he was looking in human's point of view. Now, in the following verses, from verse 17 down, we can see here number two, the heaven's point of view. So as we come to verse 17, we see a noticeable ship in Asap example as he goes through a reality check in the first half of psalm he is viewing life from a human outlook in the second half he reframes his understanding of reality by looking at heaven's view for view point now the first section deals with the trial of faith and the last part is the triumph of faith now what is it that changes everything for Asap? The same thing that will transform our perspective or our point of view. It's about worship. You know, the whole duty of man, uh, according to Ecclesiastes, the Song of Solomon, what's the whole duty of man? Is to fear God and to serve Him. And that's the whole duty of man. And to give glory to God. If we will miss that point, our life will become miserable. But here, in, the, in heaven's point of view, in, number, in, in verse 17, it says here, verse 17, Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood I there end. We can see how the message translates this. Then I understood I, uh, then understood I there end. When we just look at those around us, and when we judge God according to our own experiences, we can never have the whole picture. Everything is put into proper perspective when we go into the presence of God. The prosperity of the wicked had filled up his vision. But from now to the end of the psalm, God himself, the God of the sanctuary, becomes his focal point. He turned to God instead of judging it by himself and and uh, you know if we don't gaze at god we'll uh we'll default to our human perspective and end up becoming jealous and bitter we know that our default is is to look around us but if we keep on looking at god our perspective will be different now god's point of view is understood when we meet him when we're reminded of his attributes his character and his power we see both god's judgment of sin as well his solution offered to sinner it was only in the sanctuary of god that asap could understand the perils of the wicked 
and the sweetness of God's grace and mercy in his own life. So, because he saw it from God's perspective, now Asap understand. He understand what's happening in his life, what, what's happening in his surrounding. And now, when we look at life through the eyes of eternity, we can see here four things if we look on the, on the perspective of heaven or perspective of God. Number one, the ruin of the wicked in verse 18 to 20. 18 to 20, Asa reality is reframed as he finally able to see that God has placed the wicked, wicked on very slippery ground. In verse 2, he felt like he was sliding away, but now he recognizes that unbelievers will be cast down to ruin. From heaven's perspective, lost people will lose their footing and have a quick ride to the bottom. In verse 19, is the destiny of those who do not know Christ. It says here in verse 19, How are they brought into desolation? As in a moment, they are utterly consumed with terrors. This one is not stating that he, he said, uh, Ano ba sa English niyong abuti nga sa inyo? Ganyan na mangyayar sa yan. Hindi na alam ko pa translate yun. Parang, uh, I'm happy uh, because of what will happen to you. Alam ko ganyan mga. I remember when I was uh, when I took the the licensure exam for engineering and I failed and I come to my come to my mind but nangyari sa akin ito. Ako ay naglingkod sa Panginoon. Sabi ko di bale maimpierno naman lahat ng mga yan. <laughs> Ayun. <know>, Bitter. <laughs> Punta kay impierno ako langit ako di bale. Para sa ko hindi na Parang iba iisip ko dahil sa frustration. Now, instead of a jealousy longing for the, for the things that lost people have, we should have a holy horror about their final destiny. We need to think about them that we don't need, oh, baya mo na yan, Ma, mapunta sa impyerno. Ganun yung naisip ko eh. But it's not, it's not right. We need to think about their destiny. We need to share the gospel to them. Now, in verse 20, warns us that they are living a dream or a fantasy that will eventually turn into a nightmare. Judgment is real. And we shouldn't try to sugarcoat the awful truth of eternal punishment. Sometimes it's difficult for, for us to tell them, especially those who are in position and in, uh, with, the, with, we, with uh, those who are rich people, Sometimes they are, we don't want to offend them. Kaya nga, iba minsan ang approach kapag mag, when you are sharing, you have different approach when you are sharing to rich people and poor people. When you are sharing to poor people, you say, oh, you are wicked, you will go to hell. No? Pero sa, <laughs> sa mayaman, if you are talking to those who are rich, you know God loves you. Diba? Ganun tayo eh. Iba eh. Iba ang approach. Now, we, we cannot rewrite what God has said. We cannot whitewash the reality of everlasting punishment. People without Christ are one step from destruction, one breath from ruin, and one heartbeat from hell. When they die, the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. So we need to, to be straightforward to them. Tell them their destination. Tell them that God loves them, whatever their situation, whatever their uh, situation in life. So we can see here the, weak, the ruin of the wicked. And then Asap also saw the repentance of the righteous. In verse 21 and 22, Asap owns up for his narrow-minded vision. In verse 21, it says here in verse 21, Thus my heart was grieved and I was pricked in my reigns when controlled by bitterness this is what will happen to us we behave like an animal he uses the term for grazing animal that lives with his head hunched down seeing only the grass and never the sky that's what we are uh, we are if we are thinking of ourselves we are just uh, we are looking around us we don't even look to god we just keep on focusing on on the on earthly situation 
we don't even think of eternity. Now, like an animal out of pasture, so Asaph was viewing things only from a human perspective. But when he did, his heart was grieved or soured, his spirit and embittered. Now, one of the things that separate us from brute beasts is that animals cannot contemplate the future. They live only in the present, but when Aesop looked only at the here and now, he was like, a, like an ox that had no concept of eternal realities. So that's why we need to change our focus in life. So we can see here his, the, his repentance of righteousness. And number three, the rewards of the righteous, verse 23. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. He's trying to understand what is wrong, uh, what's wrong with him. And then in, in Isaiah 41.10, it says here, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Verse 24 describes two more rewards, God's guidance and God's glory. And in verse 25, Asaph is finally at the point where God has always wanted him to be. And also, God wants us to be like this in Psalm 25. At 73, 25, Whom have I in heaven but thee, and there is none upon earth that I desire besides thee. Until you and I can get to the point of saying, God, you're all I want because you're all I need. We only need God in our life. You know, if God is with us, uh, we have everything in life. I don't know if you, you hold, uh, for me, I experienced uh, before I never, hindi pa ako nakahawak ng malaking perang natanggap ko ngayon. But when uh, bigla namang mauubos yun eh, hindi naman forever yun. Pero yung Panginoon nasa sayo at you are satisfied with God, hindi ka maapektuhan ng kahit anong sitwasyon sa buhay mo. Kasi kahit iniisip mo na lang na kahit mamatay ka ngayon, alam mo, even you will die today, you know that uh, you will go to heaven. If if you really have the relationship to God, if you really, you are truly a, the, the son of God. And Aesop knew that nothing was more valuable than what he already had. And in verse 26, Aesop can say that no matter what happens to him, he said in verse 26, My flesh and my heart fail it, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Even uh, kahit ano pang whatever situation we have, we keep on trusting God. And I remember in Habakkuk 3, 17 to 18. I don't know how to pronounce this. Habakkuk or Habakkuk. Bala na yun. So verse 17 to 18 says here, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet, here, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Habakkuk is stating that whatever situation in my life, whatever I have, even though I don't have like this, like that, I don't have money, I don't have, uh, I'm not well known, nobody knows me. But yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will join the God of my salvation. I, I hope that this is our, uh, also what we feel when we, when we are thinking that God is uh, pinababayaan tayo ng Diyos. That we think that God don't care. That God is, uh, is far from us. He didn't know our situation. But if we keep on trusting God, we know we can say, Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will join the God of my salvation. So, now let's go to number four. The responsi responsibility of believers. Asap concludes by saying that he will fulfill two key, two key 
responsibilities of every believer. First, he will stay near to God. That's the key. He stay near to God. In verse 28, But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God, that I may declare all thy works. So if we are far from God, you know, our life will become miserable. And our point of view will be, is not right. But if we are stay near to God, it will be oh, in, uh, aligned to the will of God. His nearness is good, which means sweet and pleasant. Asaph has learned firsthand that the greater our nearness to God, the less we will be affected by the attraction and destruction around us. So if we, will, uh, if we are close to God, you know, sabi nga sa kanta, yung... Uh, Nakalimutan ko na yung kanta eh. Yung, yung nakafocus ka sa Panginoong Yesus, everything will be dim. If we focus our eyes on God. Alam nyo na yun, nakalimutan ko. And James 4.8 says, Come near to God. Uh, James 4.8. Okay, lagay nga. James 4.8. Uh, draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double minded you know if we will come closer to god yung uh, ang uh, makikilala natin ang panginoon ang panginoon ay he's just waiting for us to come closer to him hindi ang dios ang kusang lalapit sa atin tayo we need to draw nigh to god and our responsibility is to tell others about god we see this in the very last phrase of the psalm and I will tell of your good, of your deeds. So he was filled with envy and decided not to tell other believers about his doubts. Envy is the enemy of evangelism. That's why kailangan kalimutan natin become uh, envy. Because we, will not, we cannot share the gospel, the good news to the other people if we keep on uh, yung may ingit. Now our second responsibility Oh, that is our second responsibility to tell others about God. But in the second half of Psalm, he reaches a different conclusion. Once he sees the destruction of the wicked, he no longer craves that they have. And now he can speak. Sabi niya, May, uh, uh, we can speak carefully. Many of us don't tell others about Jesus, not because we don't know how, but because we don't really believe that what we have is better than what others have. Sometimes we are, I don't know, you feel that, that we have doubt if they will become a Christian, if they will be prosperous, if they will become Christian, will they uh, to, to be better in their situation? Kaya minsan, uh, minsan ganun na isip natin, but hindi dapat ganun. We need to think about eternity. Worldliness is devastating to our witness because we secretly desire to be more like lost, lost people than we desire that they be like us. We want what they have more than we want them to have what is ours. So, but we need to switch like that, that they need to have what we have, the Lord Jesus Christ. They need to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Instead of longing for what they have, Let's look at the point of view in, in God's perspective. We need to think like what, uh, what uh, Asaph did here in the last verses of Psalm 73. You know, there are times that we are frustrated. There are times that we are distracted. We are down. We are disappointed in our life because we keep on thinking of other people. Now, we need, we, we, we need to change our perspective. We, it must be uh, uh, with uh, how God looks things in life. So we need to be, think like the Lord Jesus, uh, Preacher Alex said, let this mind be in you, which was also in the Lord Jesus. Right? We need to think like Jesus Christ. We don't need to, uh, because if we keep on thinking, if we keep on looking with our point of view in life and worldly perspective, we will be disappointed. That's why we need to think our, uh, our 
eternal uh, destination. We need to think eter for the things that are eternal or incorruptible things, not the things on earth. So we can see here, first Asap, he was really confused and disappointed. But when he come to God, he realized and he understand that uh, what will happen to those people it's not the God is blessing them. It's not God is uh, uh, forgetting what we, what we need or He don't even care to us. It doesn't mean like that. We know, I know for sure based on our experience, uh, wala pang naka-experience dito na hindi kumain. Diba? Lagi tayong may kinakain. That's why we are so blessed because God is always there even though we are we are so, sometimes we are distracted to our surrounding why those people are prospering and why we are suffering look to god and we will understand what god is doing in our life let's come to the lord in prayer father god in heaven lord thank you so much for this uh,